Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation in two variables. Let me tell you first that we're not necessarily looking for integer solutions. So this is not considered a Diophantine equation, even though we could talk about them uh, once we get the general solutions. So I'm going to be looking for real number solutions to this equation. I'm going to show you a graph at the end, which kind of explains the solution we found. All right, let's get started. So in order to be able to solve this problem, obviously I need to take a look at the domain first. For example, y cannot be zero because we have one over y, which is gonna be undefined. So y does not equal zero. And obviously x does not equal zero either because we have x to the power x. Zero to the power zero is an indeterminate form. Okay, under those conditions, let's go ahead and solve the problem. First of all, I want to get rid of the fraction in the exponent. So let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power y. That's why we do it. And then these are going to cancel out. And this gives us x to the power xy equals y. Now, in order to solve these kinds of equations, and we've done similar problems before. Uh, if I can find the links, I'm going to include them here. But something like x to the y equals y to the x, I think we've done this uh, a few times. There were two different methods that I used at two different times, and I also made a short on this equation. So this is kind of similar, uh, except for the fact that we have a 1 over y. Anyways, so let's go ahead and do the following. We're going to use a similar strategy here. I'm going to assume that y can be written as a power of x, like x to the power t. You can use any variable you want, but I'd like to use t, because t is one of my favorite variables. So if we go ahead and replace y with x to the power t everywhere, we get the following. x to the power x times x to the power t equals x to the power t. Let's go ahead and um, simplify this a little bit. We're going to look at special cases, and then we're going to look for a general solution. And as I said earlier, I'm going to show you a graph. And the graph is really cool something that you can definitely play with. I'm going to try to include the link also if I can find it, or you can just put it in Desmos and do the same thing. Anyways, so if you multiply these two exponential expressions, whatever you want to call them, the exponents are added. If you multiply two powers, I should say, you add the exponents. So this becomes x to the power x to the power t plus 1 equals x to the power t. Now let's talk about special cases. For example, x equals 0. Forget it. We said that x cannot be 0. Great. x equals 1. Okay, if x is 1, this is going to be satisfied, right? Well, 1 equals 1. But what happens in the original problem? If x is equal to 1, you get 1. And then this implies, if x is 1, y to the power 1 over y equals 1. So this could imply a couple different things. For example, y could be 1 and 1 over y could be anything. Y could, uh, 1 over y could be 0, but that's impossible. Or y could be negative 1, but in that case, we're not going to have a solution. So y equals 1 is going to be the only uh, solution in this case. So 1 comma 1 is definitely going to be a solution. But that's a special case. Let's talk about more general cases. Okay, we put that aside, and now we're going to focus on the exponents. Okay? So if these two things are equal, then we can safely say that the exponents are equal. So from here we get x to the power t plus 1 equals t. Awesome. This might look like a really difficult equation, but remember, we're trying to parameterize this equation. Did I say that before? I don't know. We're trying to use a parameter to represent the solution. So that is a third variable. And in this case, I pick t. You can pick any variable. Uh, so t is going to express both x and y. And on the graph, you'll kind of see how that plays out. Anyways, so under, again, certain conditions, for example, if t is equal to negative 1, uh, this is not going to work because you're going to get something like x to the power 0 equals negative 1, which is not going to work because x to the power 0 is 1, as you know, as long as x does not equal 0. But that's out of the question. So this is not going to work, which means t cannot equal negative 1. Make sense? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and solve it under those conditions. We can basically raise both sides to the power 1 over t plus 1, something that we've done 
before, like to simplify the one over y, we're kind of using the similar strategy here. And that's going to cancel out to t plus 1, and we're going to get the x from here. So x can be written as t to the power 1 over t plus 1. This is what I mean by parameterized solution. So I use that parameter. And if you studied calculus, you're probably familiar with parametric equations where x and y depend on a third variable. And you can kind of differentiate like dy over dx or dx over dy just by using t as a variable. Anyways, this is x expressed in terms of t. And now how do you find y? Easy, because we just made an assumption that y could be written as a power of x, which is x to the power t. So since y equals x to the power t and x equals t to the power 1 over t plus 1, then y can be written as t to the power 1 over t plus 1 to the power t. And then we're going to multiply the exponents, obviously, and that's going to give us the y as t to the power t over t plus 1. And since x is equal to 1 over, I mean, not 1 over t to the power 1 over t plus 1, then we basically got our solution in terms of our parameter t. Okay, this is what I meant by parameterizing the solution. That's what we did. So in a calculus sense, we could basically talk about dy over dx, so on and so forth. Let me just quickly tell you what that is going to look like. You can't find dy over dx directly because y is not expressed as a function of x. And I don't think you can do that directly without... Um, anyways, you can't do it as far as I know. Um, prove me wrong if you know anything else. But so we can do the following. This is what is really cool about parametric differentiation. Uh, you can go ahead and differentiate y with respect to t, which is what it is. And then dx over dt is differentiate x with respect to t and just divide those. You're going to get the derivative of y with respect to x without solving for y. Make sense? That's what's really cool about it. But anyways, we're not trying to differentiate. We just need to find solutions and we did. Anyway, so those are the solutions. Let's um, look at some special cases, as I said earlier. And of course, t is not going to be 0 here, as you know, and t is not going to be negative 1. Here's a good question. Is this going to give us all the solutions? That's something to think about. But anyways, let me just go ahead and show you the graph real quick and consider the solutions as you look at the graph, and you're going to see them one more time. So here's our graph. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. The solution from Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha, WA, uh, shows y in terms of x. So kind of there is a way to express it. Yeah, if you use Lambert's w function. By the way, log means natural log here, which is ln. I don't know why they use log, but anyways, that's what uh, Wolfram Alpha does. And some books. So here's the graph. And if you look at the graph carefully, here's what you're going to notice. As you change the value of k here, this is a slider, obviously, if you graph this in Desmos, and I believe I saved this graph, I'm going to try to share a link with you, or you can just do it in Desmos. This is our parametric solution. And notice that as I change the values of k, you don't see it here, it's not dynamic, but if you do it yourself, you're going to notice that the, the white dot is going to move on this graph, as long as k is positive. If k is negative, we're it's kind of crazy. You don't want the base to be negative because that kind of brings the complex issues. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.